So moment of truth with the rods. Let's see if they are balanced. Oh, it's not a high revving engine. Well, it's not going to be a high revving engine. So if it's one or two grams out, I'm not going to be too um, upset. Fastener lubricant. There's a, there's a warning on here which says how to install the rods, how you need to torque them down, do not over torque. Um, and you install them with bearing tangs down, facing down. Let's turn the scales on. Wow, there you go. Seba Performance Super Race Rods and these are 5.4, so they're relatively short. Not like super racy ones, it's not super long. So I'll get them all out. And I'm just going to weigh these without the bearings in, um, just to see where they are, just for a rough estimate. So first one. 572 grams. Oh, 573 grams. It's changed its mind. Next one. 574 grams. I mean, these aren't the most accurate scales in the world. They're just kitchen scales. 574 grams. Five hundred and seventy-five grams. So let's measure the first one again. That's there you go. Five hundred and seventy-five grams. So not the most accurate scales, obviously. That's now five hundred and seventy-six. They're getting heavier. Five hundred. That one's got lighter. Go through them again. Five seven five. Five seven five. Let's write these again. Five seven five. Five seven five. Seven six five seven five. So don't know what to make of that really, really inaccurate scales, I guess, but they all seem to be pretty quite close. And the last few run throughs five seven five, five seven five. Odd one out, five, seven, six, five, seven, five. So they all pretty much seem to be within one gram of each other, which is good enough for me. I'll weigh the pistons next, uh, later on in the build. And I'm pretty sure that they had not been balanced because I opened the box just to see if the piston rings were installed or not. Because I hate installing piston rings. I always end up snapping them. I'm really, really bad at doing it. I don't know why, I just had lots of bad luck with it. And they're all sealed up with the with the rings on inside the pist inside the cylinders. And there's I, I, there's no way that they've been balanced. So we'll have to see how good they are as well. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at how the wrist pin fits in the little end. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in there and I'm gonna drop the wrist pin in and it should just naturally slowly fall through not too quickly with gravity if i hold it flat like that so let's have a look at that now obviously the way to do this properly is to measure the, the bore of the bush measure the outside diameter of the wrist pin and then you know exactly what your clearance is but i haven't got a bore indicator gauge small enough 
go in there. So I'm just going to do it old school way. There you go, there's a bit of oil on there. It's not moving. It was before. There you go. It's a nice snug fit. Just going there, it's going, 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 going. There you go. Eventually it will plop out the end like that. It should be noted that when I conducted the same experiment without oil, it just fell straight the way through. Now, a good mate of mine has uh, informed me that if it does that, they are actually too loose. But as this is not you know, like a race engine that's going to be going much over 5,000 RPM, I'm happy with that. Um, if I was going to be building an engine which is going to be going um, on the track, which I'm not, then I would get these rebushed and get the clearances absolutely spot on. But if I was going to do that, I would invest in a decent um, gauge to measure the inside of that bush. The next job is to fit the bearings and then I'm going to measure the inside diameter of the, uh, of the big end once the bearings are in and then I'm going to measure the journal and see what the clearance is. Another thing worth noting is I'm labelling up Number one, so that would be this would be number one cylinder. I've labelled up the, the um, piston, number one, um, and I've also labelled up the jug, the cylinder, so that we'll keep them all together. And then I'll put the wrist pin back into this, hopefully this piston, and I'll keep them all together. Right, so we have Marley um, rod bearings. Apparently I was reading online that the silver line rod bearings are not very good. The other bearings are fantastic. And then obviously CB know this, so they've supplied Marley bearings. So we need a pair, they obviously have the tabs on them. And you'll note the tabs inside the big end of the rod. And when you're looking on top of the engine, the tabs go on the bottom. On a stock rod, they have a little knob bump on top of the rod and they always sit on top. On these ones, you identify it by having the tabs on the bottom. Also. Um, you can look at the numbers stamped into the cap and the rod. They always go, they always go down, and they must always go together on any rod you put together. You always put the numbers together. So let's separate. Clean up the bearings. simple to fit them in, he says. Yeah, they fit nice, nicely made. Same in this half. There we go. So putting the cap back on. And it's got these shuffle pins, which make the rods very hard to separate once they're torqued down, once they're even just tightened down. So the rods, I'll bring out the box. Rods come with this assembly lubricant, so when I put them on 
for crank and anger we'll put this on and some loctite I, I don't know how the loctite works with this stuff as well um but i'm going to do that anyway doesn't feel very logical to me so just for the sake of measurement i'm going to tighten the cap down and to tighten the cap down i'm going to follow the instructions for the rods box back out again so it says race super rods important notice install the rods with bearing tangs down that's what i've already said coat the threads of the rod bolts with special apr grease supplied to assemble torque the rod bolts in this order first to 15 foot pounds then to 20 foot pounds 25 foot pounds and final torque of 29 foot pounds do not over torque rod bolts will be damaged due to excessive torque during installation i'm not using the actual assembly grease that they give you but i'm just going to put a little bit of regular grease just axle grease just to help lubricate them i'm not sure if that's good or bad obviously before i assemble it properly i'll clean all that out Just got that sort of equivalent finger tight. And you can't really see on here, and I mentioned this when I was weighing them, um, that the join is almost seamless between the two. Torque wrench set to 15 foot pounds. No. 20 foot pounds. Twenty-five foot pounds. Twenty-nine foot pounds. It's not really, not really that big a difference. So now I'm getting out my very new, which I've bought for this job only, micrometer. Now I zeroed them. I First thing I did was I calibrated the micrometer with this handy little thing you put in, you make sure that you zero it on um, what the measurement is in this case, uh, 50 mil. And I've done that. And then you put the micrometer onto the journal, you turn the little knurled thing until it starts clicking. You see that? Move it around until you get it nice and tight and then it should just be a snug fit over the top here. There you go, that's the tight, it should just about have some resistance coming off there like that. Once you've got it in the right place you lock it. And we now know that is the diameter, let me check. It's perfectly round, yep. Yeah, it's the same all the way around. So now we know the outside diameter of the journal on number one. So just so you know, this is an alternative method to using plastic gauge. And um, this is the proper way of doing it. So I decided that's the way I was gonna do it with this. So we put this down somewhere safe. And then we get out my other tool I bought. This little baby, which is a bore gauge indicator. So it's basically a fancy pants piece of me um, mechanics here. When this little knobbing goes in, it just moves the standard dial indicator around. And then you can work out the difference between the outside diameter of this and the inside diameter of the rod bearing. So I have the micrometer still locked off to the outside diameter of the number one journal in the vise to hold it still. And then you pop the dial bore indicator in 
I'm not sure if you can see, but you wiggle it around and see the needle's moving. And I've set it, the dial to zero. So we know that this is zero any bigger and the needle will go up like this. Um, and any smaller, the needle will go down. So we'll put the rod in here and we'll have a look and see how, that, how, it, how it works. There's loads of tutorials online how to use and set up one of these things. It's relatively simple. There it is, and you want to measure it, not on the joins between the bearings, but there it is, it's in there. And um, what's it measuring? At its smallest, it's measuring 0 0.07 and a little tiny bit. Difficult trying to do this and film it. 0 0.07 again. Oops, come out. Can't see it here. We've got it's just under 0 0.07, so pretty much between 0 0.06 and 0 0.07. A bit of maths. Measured the outside diameter of the journal. It's 55 millimetres, bang on. And I've actually measured all four journals now and they're all exactly the same. So that's really well made crank. Um, there's no um, ovulation in the journals. They're 55 millimetres all the way around. Perfectly true. The rod bearing inside diameter clearance from that 55 millimetres is 0 0.07 mil. 0 0.07 mil is the same as um, this in inches, two thousandths, or you could round it up to three thousandths, but it's two thousandths, seven five. The outside diameter of the journal is 2.16535 inches. And the general rule of thumb for clearance, and this is on all motors from what I can gather, the general rule of thumb is it um, is, um, it's actually that I've written that wrong, that should be here, 0 0.01, a thousandth, one thousandth of an inch for every inch diameter of the journal. So 0 0.01 times our journal width or diameter in inches equals 0 0.0216. And we have 0 0.0275. So a little bit on the loose side, but I'm happy with that. For this motor, I think we're going to be fine. So I will measure the inside of clearance on the other three rods, and then they'll all be ready to go on. So I must say, I'm very happy with these. They've worked out really well. I think the little ends are very, very nice. Uh, maybe a wee bit on the loose side and the big ends are really good as well maybe a wee bit on the loose side they are just over well they're over two thousandths of an inch clearance um, and for a journal this size it should be closer to two thousandths rather than further away which these are so they're a little bit on the loose side but i think for this application on this motor they should be good if i'm ever going to build a, like a full-on powerhouse race you know like 7000 rpm sort of engine then i would be looking to get um these tighter different bear maybe buy a different set of bearings and see a different manufacturer of bearings and see what they're doing so catch me next time thanks for watching